Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I have other engagements later, and I can't therefore be here the whole afternoon, but I would like to convey my greetings to the mayors present and to the young people who are here and who want to try and understand what can be the future of our, city, our cities. I have prepared a small script so as to be concise. Dear guests, Never before, as this year, uh, Biennale Architettura has entered our cities, our places, our projects, uh, the protagonists of cities. The city considered in, it, in the vastest sense of the word, uh, in the combination of its element, uh, central elements, water and land, center and periphery, tradition and creativity, can imagine to design a future based on hope. These years, we have invested lo loads of thoughts, resources, and energy in the preservation and conservation of Venice. Now the time has come for us to change our perspectives. Venice is not just an asset to be protected, and this is something that should be explained to UNESCO better, but it's a city that should live on, on which we should take action with caution to give a sense and a meaning to the role of cities today. It's a bet that needs to be played on various tables uh, in terms of uh, its economy, uh, social aspects, and other aspects too. So the title for uh, the Italian part of the exhibition um, and also the con title of this conference presupposes that we must develop a civic conscience. We shouldn't just have architecture, which is a beautiful, spectacular design, or just the aesthetic expression of some emotions. We should pay service to the community and pay attention to individuals who live in places. We must pay attention to resources. We must provide concrete responses and concrete answers to the um, a citizen's need. We must give a shape to common space as a solution for decay, degradation, marginalization. We need to improve on people's quality of life. So designers and administrators today, prime ministers and planners, uh, are requested to reflect on the social aspect of architecture by showing a concrete experiences of how architecture can convey such values as culture, participation, health, uh, sociality, integration, and last but not least, legality. The challenge we are faced with is the following. We should understand how to shape our society, how to see to it that great urban centers can be redeveloped and requalified by focusing on economic development, by ensuring sustainability, by governing uh, inequalities and other problems. I would like to thank uh, Paolo Baratta and the curator of the 15th uh, architecture exhibition, Alejandro Ravenna who were able to meet this challenge under the encouragement of the municipal administration to see to it that this exhibition that attracts millions of visitors uh, uh, every year can uh, sort of switch on the spotlights on social problems, a biennale that focuses on the themes of reconversion and reuse. We concentrate on peripheries, particularly industrial peripheries that are now semi-abandoned places, semi-deserted places, even though in the past they were at the very center of people's life. Now we've come to the mainland with two projects that focus on our industrial peripheries, the Porto Marghera area, an area of 2,200 hectares that served as the uh, manufacturing center of our territory, uh, whereas now it's uh, just suffering from decay. 
day. We have reporting from Marghera, an exhibition that shows how 12 big cities worldwide have tackled the problem of the transformation of industrial areas with projects to reconvert and recover abandoned, deserted areas, and this is organized in Forta Marghera, and up Marghera on stage, an exhibition with uh, uh, 12 photographers and eight architectural firms on the future of uh, uh, Porto Marghera for the birth of the creation of a new city developed vertically. So these uh, uh, projects encourage reflection. They revive the dialogue between architecture and social and civil society. They help us grasp and interpret reality by paving the way to experimentation processes with the scanty resources we have to improve on people's quality of life, to make sure that also for future generation there can be growth. I would like to draw my comments to a close with the public response to what was united by UNESCO in Turkey regarding Venice. Apparently, UNESCO, uh, United Nations agencies, has decided to include Venice in the list of uh, cities, sites in danger. They said that Venice needs to be saved and that very little has been done recently. We think that all, of, all advice can be useful, but I need to really understand the, the meaning of uh, UNESCO's message. Uh, n- n- nothing has been contributed in concrete terms but this sort of advice. We accept everybody's suggestions, but the time has come, I think, for international decisions to be accepted uh, by pointing out that it's up to the Venetians to think about Venice. They don't want to die. They want to to see to it that Venice starts to grow again, and we want to do it based on our pride and uh, standing on our legs. Uh, Social programs should distribute loads of money and uh, houses, etc. But these resources are no longer available. If this idea of UNESCO will help Europe and the state to refund the special law, which hasn't been refunded yet for 10 years, which hasn't been refunded for 10 years now, then we, we will welcome that. But I'm the mayor's the mayor of the Venetians, and Venice should be defended by us, first of all, with the help of everybody. But we need concrete help because we are fed up with uh, advice.